Well, hello there, YouTube family. Auntie is here. I'm Patty Jackson. It's time for the curls and the scoop. It's not cute, not knowing. Let's get this hug in because I missed you guys. Come on. I got to tell you, I missed you guys. I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving holiday weekend. For me, it was cooking and cleaning and cleaning and cooking. And they couldn't wait for me to get out of the house. And I couldn't wait to come back. I missed you guys. I certainly hope it was a great holiday. I have so much to unpack. I hope I have all of my notes because I first off I'm still shook about the Irene Gara. What happened? I loved Irene Cara. When I was a teenager I drove my parents crazy. Running around the house singing fame and just being loud and I can't sing. I never get my dad said to me, do you know any other songs? Because you keep singing this song. Do you know any other damn songs? I loved Irene Cara. And if we're around a certain age, you know what I mean when I said we grew up with this woman. Electric Company, Sparkle, Philip Michael Thomas, Aaron Loves Angela, DC Cab. But it was when, was it, was it like 79 or 80 when they came out with Fame? She sang the soundtrack to it. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to learn how to fly. I ain't going to sing because I can't sing. But there was this movie, Fame. Gene Anthony Ray, Debbie Allen, just incredible. She sang the song, Fame. She also sang the soundtrack of Flashdance. What a feeling. Jennifer Beale starred in this movie, which was also huge in the 80s. She went on to win Grammys and Oscars and phenomenal, phenomenal woman who made an impact. There was a period during the 90s where she realized she wasn't getting paid right, that there was something wrong with the money. And she sued the record company and she won. Irene Cara won that battle, but they blacklisted her. They blackballed her. That nobody want to work with her because she proved that this this, this this is my music and she sued for the rights to have her music. Her last years, um, when they found her dead, she was 63. She was dead alone in her home. Her family is asking for privacy. I'm not trying to put no conspiracy theories out there and the family has asked for that to stop, but we're going to find out what happened to her. I interviewed her maybe like 12 years ago, but it was over the phone. It was a phoner. She was in our area for a show. Um, in recent years in pictures, there was a sadness in her eyes to me. Like she didn't seem happy. And it was like, wow, woman is beautiful in these songs. Not that beauty is everything, but you know how you look at someone and you're just like, wow. She just had a sadness in her in her eyes, and she was very disturbed that she was blacklisted like she was in the business, and it wasn't fair. So when you see the rights of um, Mariah Carey and just others fighting for their songs and their music, because it's theirs, a Taylor Swift, because it's theirs. Back then, they could successfully blackball you and blacklist you, but now... They got to give you your money. So sad. I just loved Irene Cara. And as soon as we find out what happened, we're going to let you know. Sparkle and fame. I'm telling you, I drove my parents nuts when that movie came out. We also lost Don Newkirk. He was a producer, performer, but he was best known for his collaborations in the world of hip-hop. Third Base, Prince Paul, De La Soul, Stets Sonic. They had this song I call All That Jazz, and it was Don Newkirk who did all the instrumentation. He was young. He was 56 years old. They're not saying what happened with him either, but Don Newkirk, very important part of that, I guess it seemed like in the 80s, 90s, in the world of hip hop, and he passed away over the weekend. Let's talk about some of these award shows. The Griot Awards, if you did not see it, find it. 
it's streaming on Paramount Plus or go through YouTube. Byron Allen, a man who does not get the respect that he should, he doesn't, put on a hell of a show. The Grio Awards, they honor Tyler Perry, Patti LaBelle, Queen Latifah, Norman Lear, Jennifer Hudson. Fantasia came out there, child, singing and looking great. Benjamin Crump, the attorney, he spoke on his speech. Oh, the importance of our families and our children and what we should stand for and our responsibility. It was so inspiring. Byron Allen, they also did Kenan Thompson. Byron Allen is just as powerful as Tyler Perry. He owns the Weather Channel, y'all. He owns a lot of stuff. And when people try to discriminate against him, he sued and he won. He sued and he won. He sued corporations. You don't want to advertise on my station, on my all-black station? Well, we'll see you in court. Byron Allen, I don't think, gets the respect because he was a comedian years ago and he had, he had to show real people. But all the top-tier comedians look at him in awe because he wound up being this power player behind the scenes making moves. And this Grio Awards, it was excellent. Now, I don't know why they had it on at the same damn time as the Soul Train Awards. Y'all owned by the same company. Y'all mean to tell me that y'all couldn't switch up to a different night, same time, so you were forced to choose because the Soul Train Awards came on too. Mars Stand in Time got the Lifetime Achievement Award, and they're so deserving, and the performance was so good. Singer Shantae Moore, she did a whole five-minute set. She ran through her songs, looking good, sounding good. She's 55, and she put young girls to shame. Shantae Moore was excellent. I enjoyed Money Long. You know, I play her music. I just have a newfound respect for her and Ari Lennox. Uh, what else? The Escape Tribute. These girls don't get along. They don't get along. They accept the Lady of Soul Awards. Well, Latasha, who doesn't get along with the other ladies, you know, talked about love and positivity and spreading it. Child Tiny looked at her like, I want to thank my sisters. The shade, the discomfort on that damn stage. I don't. When they go on tour, you're not going to see Latasha. But Latasha got a whole set of other problems. All right, the reason why they don't tour together is because Latasha's husband doesn't like the manager that's managing the other ladies of Escape. But Latasha's husband got another woman pregnant. And she's on social media. She wants to live in her truth. She wants to tell the truth. Babies don't hold no man. If anything, it'll make a man run. You may think that you got the prize because you are you got pregnant by this man and he married. Well, won't you get your face cracked if he never divorces his wife? Won't you get your face cracked when you realize that he ain't got all the money that you think he has? Somebody go ahead and get a job. I hate to see instances like that because anytime you do the nah, 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 karma's going to come around and whack you upside your head. But Latasha's got, she's got a lot going on. I feel bad. The estrangement from escape. She's going through this mess with her husband. This girl having a baby, clowning her on social media. Ah, ah, ah. Karma is real. That's all I'm going to say. Karma is real. Megan Thee Stallion, she says she's going on a world tour next year, and she's coming out with a new album. Jay Leno, we were just sending up prayers for Jay because he had third-degree burns, side of his face, his neck, his hands, gasoline fire. Well, Jay Leno is out here at the Burn Center and back performing. He was so excited about getting back to performing that he hit a cop car on the way to the venue. Okay, Jay Leno. Congrats, Tyler Perry. You just signed a new picture deal with Amazon. This is a four-picture deal. I guess he's finished with Netflix. You know, just had a jazz man's blues. But Tyler Perry is now in the Amazon family. Four-picture 
deal. The reviews are coming in and not from film critics, but people that are seeing the Whitney Houston movie, I Want to Dance with Somebody. It arrives in theaters December 23rd. A lot of people are complaining. I'm talking about the average everyday Joe just going to the movies. I think one it thing, Whitney Houston was so beautiful. Who could play her? She was, just, she was just stunning. I met Whitney Houston years ago, and I was just, I was just in awe. I was just like, God, this woman is beyond gorgeous. They're, they're comparing the actress who's playing Whitney Houston. Then it is so hard to lip sync. It's all Whitney Houston's music. When you hear the Star Spangled Banner and you give good love and I'll always love you, they're all Whitney's vocals. And what they had the actors do, you know, mouth it, which is not easy. But I don't know how this movie is going to do. Plus, people are tired of these Whitney Houston movies. Can y'all stop? Can she rest in peace, please? Rihanna. She has signed a multi-million dollar deal with Apple. Her road coming back, Super Bowl, world tour next year. She's got a lot going on. And there's a new uh, documentary about her return to music because we know that she's been busy with the lingerie. She's been busy with the cosmetics, Fenty stuff. Now she's coming back to music. This Saturday night is Kiki Palmer and SZA. Kiki is hosting Saturday Night Live. Will Smith, as he gears up for his movie Emancipation, coming out in theaters this Friday, streaming on Apple on December the 9th. He says he understands that people think it's too soon for him to be promoting a movie and going out to support it. He says he understands that. He was asked in a recent interview. He says he's basically doing it for those who worked on the movie. Antoine Fuqua, the director. I got to tell you, before the slap in Chris Rock, the word was, oh, Will Smith going to win a, he going to win back-to-back -back Academy Awards. That's how good he is as Peter, this, this slave who ran away. They said, that's how good he was. But with the slap, will that happen? Will Hollywood, you know, ban him or blackball him? It's going to be interesting how this movie is received, but Will said he did it because the people that worked on the movie, and I've asked you guys, is it too soon for Will? And majority of you have said, no, you're going to support the movie. Patti LaBelle's new holiday movie, A New Orleans Noel, produced by Whoopi Goldberg, hits Lifetime on Saturday. This weekend, Kennedy Center honors, and they're honoring Gladys Knight, the rock group U2, inspirational singer Amy Grant, actor George Clooney. They're all going to be honored this Sunday. Lizzo. I didn't get a chance to see it this weekend, but if you guys did, love Lizzo, the documentary about how Lizzo became Lizzo, is on HBO Max. If you've seen it, like, let me know. She's also coming out with a New Year's Eve special. Yes, Lizzo live New Year's Eve on HBO Max. Tony Braxton recently revealed in an interview that she was asked to sing at rapper Little Kim's wedding. So she asked Little Kim, so what do you want me to sing? Little Kim responded, eh, you can sing anything you want because can't nobody understand what you're singing. That's been my biggest critique of Tony Braxton. I love her. But she got the mumbling. I said, oh, stop, stop, stop mumbling. Can you sing? Tony Braxton was rumored to be going on the road with Anita Baker. You know, Anita Baker's doing this big world tour. And at first they were throwing around Tony Braxton's name. Babyface is going on tour with Anita Baker. And let me tell you something. Babyface puts on a heck of a show. And it's long because he does his hits other people's hits that he wrote, produced for, you're in for a treat with Babyface. The movie Devotion, Jonathan Majors, Glenn Powell, 
took in $9 million at the box office. Blair Underwood shook us up over the weekend a couple years ago when he said he was divorcing his wife after 27 years, and everyone was like, why? Well, now Blair Underwood is engaged to a woman he has known for 41 years. He said they've been friends for 41 years. Before he became famous, she is an actress. She is from Trinidad. They've been friends for 41 years, and he says that their friendship blossomed into love. Okay, Blair, he didn't marry me, so I'm not going to get mad. But you know that I love you. Okay, Marvel fans, I got a rundown for y'all. Spider-Man 4 is supposed to be coming out 2024, December. The Avengers, Kang Dynasty with Jonathan Major says Kang the Conqueror. That's coming out May of 2025. July of 2025. Shang-Chi Part 2. Captain America with Anthony Mackie. May of 2024. Blade with Mahershala Ali coming out September 2024. Namor, the villain in Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. That's coming out. He's getting a spin-off, y'all. July 2026. Can't read my own handwriting. November of 2026, it's the X-Men. And in the spring of 2027, Black Panther 3. Are we going to be alive? I said 2027. If you saw Black Panther, you know it's going to be a three. But we got to wait until 2027. It's not cute not knowing is what I love to say. And a lot of you guys heard from me over this holiday weekend. Leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Yes, I'll be checking out them comments. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video. I appreciate you guys. You have no idea. And I love, love bringing the scoop to you. It's not cute not knowing. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.